On this edition of MC Gen Kim, Titration of Vitamin C. A titration is a method to determine the unknown concentration of a substance using a different substance of known concentration. There are many types of titrations, but today we will be performing a redox titration. As we all know, redox means an oxidation reduction reaction. We will use this type of titration to determine the amount of vitamin C in a tablet. Vitamin C is an essential nutrient and is found in citrus fruits such as oranges. It is a form of ascorbic acid which is easily oxidized. The oxidizing agent that can be used in this titration is iodine as the known substance. The molarity and volume used of iodine will help to calculate the amount of vitamin C. When the reaction stops, this is known as the end point. The use of an indicator helps to show the exact amount of when the reaction stops. In many cases, the indicator will change colors to show that the reaction is complete. For this reaction, we will be using starch as our indicator. In the redox reaction of ascorbic acid and iodine, ascorbic acid will lose two electrons, as shown in the equation. Since ascorbic acid is being oxidized, iodine will be reduced, meaning that iodine will gain two electrons, as shown in the equation. The total of these two will tell you the overall reaction of vitamin C and iodine. In the presence of starch, the binding between the starch and iodine will cause a color change of the solution. The drawing on the left shows the initial setup of the burette filled with iodine and the beaker filled with 25 milliliters of water, vitamin C, and starch. The drawing on the right shows the final setup of the burette with a measured amount of iodine used to cause a color change in the beaker. Some things to remember include 1. Always record the initial and final volume of iodine in the burette by using the correct number of significant digits. Two, slowly add iodine by turning the stopcock. Adding too much too fast could cause you to overshoot and not accurately observe an endpoint. Three, endpoint is when there is a permanent color change. For this experiment, you will need your titration setup complete with a 250 milliliter Erlenmeyer flask and a burette, a mortal and pestle, a funnel, three pieces of whey paper, vitamin C tablets, starch indicator, iodine, and of course, don't forget your goggles. First, prepare your burette by pouring about five milliliters of iodine into it. Make sure the stopcock is closed before you do this. Over the sink, tilt your burette so that the iodine solution will coat most of the inside. Discard the iodine in the sink and rinse with plenty of water. Repeat this process one more time, then carefully fill your burette with the iodine. First, weigh the whey paper and record the mass. Then place one tablet onto the paper and record the combined weight. Next, weigh the other two pieces of whey paper and record the mass of each. Using the mortar and pestle, crush up the tablet into a fine powder. Then divide the crushed tablet between the three whey papers. You will perform three titrations with these three samples. Once you have divided the crushed tablet between the papers, Weigh the paper and crushed tablet to determine the mass of the crushed tablet. Transfer the crushed tablet to a 250 milliliter Erlenmeyer flask. Add 25 milliliters of DI water and about seven drops of the starch indicator. Swirl to dissolve the crushed tablet. There may be some powder that does not completely dissolve, but this will not affect your results. Once you have set up your titration, make sure to record your initial volume of the burette to the correct amount of significant digits. Then you may begin. Slowly turn the stopcock until the iodine begins to drip out. 
While the iodine is dripping into the flask, swirl the flask to mix the solution. Do this until you see a permanent color change. When you see a color change, close the stopcock and record the final volume of the burette. Repeat this titration two more times, filling the burette back up with iodine each time and recording the initial and final volumes. Here are some values that you will need for the following calculations. First, we will need to calculate the number of moles of iodine. Using the molarity and volume of iodine used, the moles can be calculated to equal 3.60 times 10 to the negative 4 moles. There is a 1 to 1 ratio of iodine and ascorbic acid, so the number of moles of iodine equals the number of moles of ascorbic acid. To find grams of ascorbic acid, multiply the number of moles by the molar mass of ascorbic acid. The molar mass of ascorbic acid equals 176.12 grams per mole. Multiply this and your final answer will be 0 0.0634 grams of ascorbic acid. Next, we will determine the amount of ascorbic acid in the crushed tablet. Divide the grams of ascorbic acid by the total grams of the powder and multiply by 100 to give a percentage value of 67.5% ascorbic acid in the crushed tablet. To calculate the total amount of ascorbic acid in the whole tablet, divide 67.5 by 100 and multiply by the mass of the whole initial tablet. The value calculated is 0.246 grams of ascorbic acid in a whole tablet. 